everyone. Today we are talking to Dr. Corey Allen from Simple Marriage. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, we're really excited to share your thoughts and ideas about relationships with the viewers of the Celebrate Life Summit. So, uh, all the way from Texas. That's absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll just jump in with the first question here. What made you start your Simple Marriage blog and now your podcast? Well, the short story is uh, four years ago, started writing for a small town newspaper here in the area, just doing a weekly column, just as a way to get uh, more information out there for people and then also for my practice in marriage and family therapy. And after writing those for several months, I realized I got this warehouse of arms that just sitting here doing nothing beyond going through this little paper of 2,000 people. So I put them online and started getting some traffic from them, getting comments, and realized this is a whole lot more fun to get <laughs> almost real-time dialogue with people uh, as opposed to newspaper writing. So closed down what I was doing with the newspaper and shifted it all to Simple Marriage, which that's when that was born. It would have been January 2008. So kind of started that ever since. And then did some testing along the way, but then... One area that's not talked near enough about is the idea of sex in marriage and how to have a healthy sex life in marriage, but yet I constantly see couples and hear from people that are having problems in that area, so I contacted Gina Paris at Grimden and said, hey, let's start, a, let's start a weekly show that reaches married folk and talks about having a healthy sex life, and so that's when Sexy Marriage Radio started. So we're three months into that, I guess. So it's still kind of a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, one of the ideas that we want to share in the Celebrate Life Summit is that all couples struggle, and it's how you choose to work through those struggles that make right. your marriage great or not. Um, right. What kinds of things have you struggled with in, in your life, uh, in your marriage? Well, man, we're, my wife and I are coming up on 19 years this May. So we've had uh, pretty low times, uh, five, six years into it. We actually reached the point of sitting across from each other at a food court in the mall and said the words, if some things don't change, this marriage isn't going to last. Mm -hmm. So that, was, that would be the low point, and a lot of that was just because of our own focus elsewhere, I guess is the best way to phrase it, mm -hmm. of... Uh, just spending too much time doing other things and not not focusing on each other. Um, so that's that's the biggest one. It just got so sidetracked in all those chronic issues we never would deal with and never would face. Right. That they just finally come so big that it's like uh, it seems easier just to get out. Hmm. So, but that started us on a journey of of some counseling. Um, I was not out of therapist the time through lots of counseling, lots of work, just created something better. And now I think what we struggle with most now is just keeping the important important and not be replaced, you know, supplanted by the immediate. How do couples overcome these bumps in the road? What resources can they turn to? The best thing you can do, I mean, the best advice I have for couples is seek help. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean professional help. Go to Simple Marriage. Um, there's, I'm friends with lots of marriage bloggers that have great thoughts, um, great advice, you know, kind of help steer you in the right direction. Uh, seek out a conference, go to a Celebrate Life Summit, you know, I mean, do, <laughs> do, just do things that, that keep, that are in line with your priorities and, and in line with your values. So there's plenty of help out there. There's plenty of assistance that's available. Some of it's free, but uh, man, take advantage of the paid stuff that's out there too. The online classes, counseling, coaching, seminars, conferences. I mean, there's so many things that can be good and really helpful and life-changing and marriage-changing. You've obviously talked to a lot of couples with your, your counseling and stuff that you do. What is the number one thing, in your opinion, that couples struggle with? Well, a lot of a lot of what it's what research is going to 
to say the big, the two big issues are sex and money, um, and that's pretty much true <laughs> with the couples I've seen and in my own life. Um, those are the two big hot button areas. Um, I, I think you also have to add into it some respect issues. You know, lack of respect. Maybe it, or you, you start to become roommates, not lovers, and husband and wife anymore. Mm-hmm. So it is. It is one of those that. You know, there's so many different things, and it's like you mentioned at the beginning of this conversation that everybody has problems, everybody has struggles. It's how you handle those that makes the difference. I mean, even great marriages have problems, but they just have figured out healthy ways or better ways to handle it rather than let it fester and become huge mountains. Do you think couples should have regular date nights, and how would you suggest to them that they find the time? This is an interesting one um, because it, my field is a big proponent in all the different self-help and marriage blog world. They're big proponents of date nights. I, I really believe in the idea of you need to find time together that's just you, but it doesn't necessarily have to be as structured as a date night in my mind. It, it can be in my household, we have a six-year-old and a four-year-old, so that means there's a, a routine bedtime. You know, my kids are in bed at a certain time every single night without fail. So that means we got an hour or two together every evening after the kids go to bed. And that can be a date. You know, you don't go anywhere. You just We just sit and have, watch a movie or we sit and talk or we have a dessert or we have another kind of dessert. Or, I mean, we, <laughs> we it's just, there's, there's ways you can steal moments together mm-hmm. that aren't as structured as a date night. But if you are a couple, I think, that's, that's been lost in the routine, one of the best things you can do to change that is schedule a date night that says it's a non-negotiable, it will happen once a month at the very minimum, and, and go out together. Use friends, use neighbors, you know, child care swap in a sense. Of we have that with some of our friends where we'll watch their kids so they can go out. They'll watch our kids so we can go out. Then we're not out any money. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's lots of ways to do it. You just got to be a little creative. And for heaven's sake, if you have family nearby, let family take care of your kids. I mean, come on. It's a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've been on a few dates, I'm sure, with your wife. What, what has been some of your favorites? Um, our dates are typically pretty relaxed. Um, we usually just go someplace that's, you know, living in Texas, we have a lot of chance for, for nice weather. Unless it's the summer, then it's just brutal hot. <laughs> but most of the year you can go, and we like to sit places where we can sit outside and eat. And, and lots of times that's just that's our day because we'll stay at the restaurant for two hours. And, I mean, we'll just sit and eat and talk and laugh, and we're big people watchers. So we love just kind of interacting with what's going on around us. Um, but we, you know, we also live in a big city. You know, we'll go to concerts some of those different things. It's, it's trying to every so often break the norm, do something a little different as far as the date night because, you know, dinner and a movie, yeah, that, that's fun, but there's more to do than that. So we try to we try to get a little creative and go rock climbing or some other different things if, if it's available. Fun. Do you have any other programs or would you like to um, tell our viewers where they can reach you? Well, uh, my main home is simplemarriage.net, and then sexymarriageradio.com is where Gina and I are hanging out. And the one thing that we've gotten really kind of cool feedback from is Gina Harris, the, my co-host for the radio show, we're not married to, to each other. And, right. and that's been kind of a cool feedback. Because lots of the shows we hear that are talking about sex and marriage that's from couples that are married. So the, just a little side note. Um, but... I have, on Simple Marriage, I have classes that I offer and lots of products that I offer that will help from across the board of just trying to spark things that have kind of gotten monotonous to blow up my marriage, which is a class I offer three times a year that is specifically geared towards couples that are in crisis. And it's a way to get some tremendous help in the comfort of your own home. And that's an online course, right? Yeah, it is. It's it's very interactive. Um, 
lots of the feedback I get from people that have taken it so far is how involved it can be if you want it to be. So it does take quite a bit of time, but it is, it's very interactive and it's a 16 week class. Wow. So it, it walks you through a whole process of how to look at marriage differently and change some things that have been going on to create something better. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. This has been this has been fun. Yeah, we really appreciate your time, and we know you're a busy guy. And yeah, thank you very much for participating <laughs> in the Celebrate Life Summit. It, it'll be great to share this with the on our relationships day. Well, I I hope it helps and goes a long way for both for everybody that's involved. Exactly. All right. We well, have a great day. You too, ladies. All right. Thanks.